Well, welcome everyone to Power Hour. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's go ahead and make sure you all can hear me. If you'd please type the number one in the chat box to let me know that you can, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So many of you, 1.618, I got a three. There we go. <laughs> well, welcome everyone, man. I hope it was a great, uh, great weekend for you. Hope today's been a good trading day as well up to this point. Let me get my camera going there. Should be okay. Let me move that over. Ah, there we go. Let me put that over there. Move that around over there. We should be good with that. All right. Perfect, 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 perfect. Loud and clear. Thank you, Lee. Morning, 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 everybody. All right. As we do get started here today, keep in mind that everything we look at is for educational purposes. Nothing's meant to be advice or recommendations. If you find something here that you like today, something, anything, Make sure that it fits your own personal risk profile and risk tolerance before you ever take on that trade that indicated that setup. All right. Oof. Cool. All right. So we got mastermind group coming up tonight, right? I'll be wrapping up the, well, actually that's not true. We'll be continuing our series on covered calls this evening in mastermind. Uh, trading you is coming up tomorrow night, September 6th. I, we've got a special topic for that. Trade watch alerts. Q&A is coming up on the 7th and a circle is coming up on the 11th. Uh, yes, there was Monday, but we had a holiday, so we did not have anyone last night. Uh, and then mastering the trade, that is for all of you that are in power option plays. This is for you. This is the place to ask all of your questions. All of your trainings are, are, are out there, right? Uh, Pop, covered call, E-mini, Vegas spreads are on the regular schedule, as are Power Hour and Trading Coaches Playbook. Uh, Lee, can you drop in? Uh, I think we've got it already for Stop the BS. I don't see it on here. But we've got a new training coming up, folks. It's the first time I've ever taught it before. Uh, it's in this month, the month of September. Y'all need to be there. It is called Stop the BS, right? This is going to be earth-breaking stuff for you. Uh, there you go. I appreciate that. Lee just dropped it in there. We've got a couple of dates and times. I don't remember what they were. I just know that it's a, I know it's one that I'm teaching this month. Uh, and I wanted to make sure we get that out there to you. So click on that link and get yourself registered for that free training, guys. Do not miss out on it. Here's our follow us page. Make sure that you follow along with some of, if not all of the platforms that we're on and always bring yourself over to tradinglikeaboss.com. That should be like a weekend ritual. You just go there and find what's going on. You register for Power Hour. You register for Trading Coaches Playbook. Any other trainings that are coming up, take the replays of anything that you missed throughout the course of the week, right? And you'll find a lot of that stuff right on that page, okay? Uh, here is our Trading Boss Manifesto. Right. This to me is what it means to be to me, to the company, what it means to be a trading boss. We have spent hours and hours and hours going over this document inside of our you know, meetings, company meetings, to make sure that we hone in on this of exactly what it is for you to be a trading boss. Right. So I read this every single morning as I start my day. I've got three different documents I read every day. This is one of them. Right. As a reminder to me of this is what our goal is. This is what our strive is. This is what we're pushing towards uh, is right there. And we've got the day traders clock. Folks, if you've not, so we've got a very limited supply, okay? Get it, don't get it, doesn't matter to me. We've decided at this point, we're not going to reorder any uh, additional ones. I'm going to save one or two back just as, um, just that I have them as, uh, I don't want to say spares, that's not the word, just as memorabilia, right? This is what we've done in the past. But we're not going to put this back. We've got too many other projects right now. We're about out of we're we are about out of our clocks. We had a big response to this over the weekend, bigger than I thought we were going to receive. Um, so if you're interested, go ahead and grab one of those clocks. They are awesome. If anybody has the clock and wants to throw a comment in there of what your thoughts are, folks, it, it has saved me. Mine right now is right there on the wall. I don't know if you can see how I'm pointing, but on that wall, you can't see it, but it's hanging up on that wall. Uh, in our office, I have one behind me, right? So I can easily do this when I'm in my recording studio. And I have one on the other wall that is, I get also behind, well, it's really to the right of me if I'm on my trading system, it's off to the right. Uh, but I've got them hung up everywhere purposely so I could see it, right? I want to know what's going on. Sean has this in his office. Amelia has it hung in her office, right? You definitely want to take advantage of it. Uh, yeah, there you go. Kevin said, I love mine. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. it. It's saved my bacon more times than not when I look over and go, oh, never mind. We're in the red zone. Don't do it now. Ah, Okay, big help, big help. Oh, all right, don't want to drop that in just yet. What trades have you done today? Go ahead and drop those trades in. I want to know. 
Uh, funded trades, non-funded trades, it doesn't matter. You didn't do anything today? That's fine. What about on Friday? Did you do a trade on Friday? Let me know what they were. Drop them in. I am very interested to hear it. This is all about sharing. It's all about community. It's all about a commitment level from you. Committing to becoming a great trader, part of that is trading. And I don't need it to be funded. I just need it to be hitting enter, right? Non-funded works fine for me. But drop those in. This is a Consider this to be your accountability check. Yes, I am trading. Here I am. Right. And I get it that we don't trade every day. I don't. I certainly don't trade every day. I can't. Uh, here, John, who's a, a very big trader. No trades today. Friday's trades, Wheel of Fortune, Tesla and Shopify, Naked Puts, GME, cash flow of 1100 bucks. Kaching. There you go. There you go. Excellent. 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 Good job. So um, let's see. Roby said sold 10 cash secured puts on KOLD at $53. Nice. All right, Roby, good job. Excellent. Keep dropping them in, folks. I'll read them out as they hit. For now, let's go ahead and look at uh, trade from Amelia today. All right? So what do we have? Buy to open. Let me grab a, a pen. I've right, got a buy to open here at 9.40 a.m. She bought five contracts of the SPY for 51 puts. And she bought them at $1.46, okay? She sold it in two different exits, $9.45 and $9.46. Her first goal was to get out of you know, the majority of those trade contracts, which she did, three of the five. And you can see that she bought the contracts. Um, she bought the contracts right here. So looking for where to put the arrow, right there. And on this candle, and these are going to be uh, two-minute intervals. There's a two. All right, so two-minute candles. So on this next candle, she allowed it to drop. This candle, she went ahead and she got out of her five contracts in three exits, or two exits, rather. Three contracts and two, right? Both of them were $1.74. So 46, 56, 66, 76, uh, it's not... So 29 cents, right? 29 cents per contract, per share, which means per contract. Let me just get the calculator here. So we got $29 times five contracts. It's $145. Well, we're talking about $145 between 940 and 946, right? Go ahead and annualize that sucker out and see how that works out, Right. What did she have for rate of return? She would have already done the math here. 19% rate of return in six minutes, guys. Amelia crushes it every single day uh, with what she comes up with. I love the candidate she finds day in and day out. Uh, let's see. Roby also put waiting for Boyle to drop a little bit more and then going to sell uh, cash secured puts at 54 to expire this Friday. Looks to be a uh, support level. So take note of that, guys. Roby's a great trader. Uh, I've known Roby for many, many years now. Um, you know, he's saying 54 on Boyle is a great support. So check that out. Joan, Netflix, September 8, uh, 445 um, calls, five calls at a dollar each. Nice. Uh, that was the profit on him, I'm assuming. Uh, $1 each on that. All right. Good, 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 good. Okay. So today is a... Profit, yes. Okay, so $500 profit on that. Great job, Joan. Great job. So, you know, and that's what it's all about, folks. To show you that it's not me and it's not just things that me or my team are putting up there. It's others like yourself. And again, we consider everything to be non-funded. I don't care if it, you don't, I don't ask anybody, is it funded, non-funded? No one, I'm not legally allowed to, right? Period. Not without getting proof, right? You got to show me brokerage statements, tax returns, blah, 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 right? Turn over your firstborn. Um, now for some, that may not be a bad thing. Like, yes, take them. So then we just convert to firstborn grandchild, which usually is a bad thing, right? You don't want to do that. So, um, it's all about accountability folks. That's all it is. Just, you drop the trades in and the show, all right, I've done it. You put it out to the universe. It's out there funded, non-funded really doesn't make a difference. All right. Uh, but today's busy day. It's a Monday in reality for me, which means all the Monday stuff. My marketing meeting takes place today, which my entire team, what do we got going on? What's our updates coming in? Our whole team is in there, right? It's a big company meeting uh, every Monday. 
we have here, I've got another meeting right after this, uh, you know, with um, another person who's our web admin. So I am swamped on uh, Mondays, which today again is equivalent of Monday, right? So if we look, if we look at what's going on today, right? We've got, well, we'll talk S&P 500, right? We'll look at some of the companies in, in just a bit, right? But you got the VIX, took a little bit of a pop today, eight cents, really not that big a deal on VIX, right? If we look at TradeStation, uh, we're down for the most part, right? The S&P 500 is down seven points. The NASDAQ uh, is down eight, so not bad. The Dow is down 30, RUT's down 32, okay? So if we look, we've got a couple of stocks that are popping. This, this has changed a little bit in the last little while where we had more um, red than green. We're seeing some greens pop in there now as well. You know, booking is up 12 bucks. Uh, on booking, Netflix is up 11. And if we go to Netflix, right? I'm a huge fan of Netflix. Watch, if we look, Netflix here, right? So boom, okay. We opened up, didn't really get a great entry for me here, at least not off of the existing setup, meaning the fib lines that are in there. If we look over, and we're gonna talk um, pivot points today. Um, let's see, if we convert over to Netflix. All right, Netflix had that great run up Right, first five minute candle, open flat, pull back, bounce. Right, we're talking that 441, uh, 444 level to 446. That happened in five minute in a five minute candle. Right, that was a great setup on Netflix, and we're going to talk pivots today, which is why I took some focus on this. Uh, if you see when where Netflix opened, and you guys hear me mention this all the time, and, and the phraseology is clear and concise entry. So I don't have a concise entry with where it opened. Not on the pattern in the chart, the way that it sets up. Now, if we pull back to that 433 level, yes, that's a concise entry as we got that bounce. We've minimized our risk because we've got a support line level confluence even there to help reduce the risk. Well, excuse me. Well, when we open up here, we've got other tools. Right. Listen, you may you may open up your toolbox and you grab out a seven eighths wrench and you realize it doesn't fit. Right. And then three quarter is too small and one inch is too big. And uh, what do you do? Well, go get a metric wrench. Right. You got another tool in the toolbox. OK, so it's no different here. I can't use the standard tool that I would use every day on Netflix. So we go over to a different tool and that different tool is pivot points. So I'm not going to teach pivots yet today. But if you have a $2 move on your on the stock price and your delta has a, if you have a 70 delta, $2 move, you're not getting in at the very beginning. You're not getting out at the very uh, top. You know, so say you had a $1 move in there on the stock, you get 70 cent move on the option, right? 70 cent move on an option that would probably cost you, you know, eight or $9 uh, is not horrific when you look at it, right? Especially that you're in and out of that trade in five minutes. My trading day would be done in essence at 940, right? You're done, because that's the end of the closing price. The closing time is what they post, the 940 candle, okay? So great overall move um, on Netflix today. And it's they're not the only stock that's had it. I mean, you could look at booking. Problem with booking is even on pivots, they just don't, you don't get enough shares traded enough volume to for me to trade these on pivots right at all so if we go back and look here so again am i setting you up for this yeah i am right let's go look at united healthcare same scenario on united healthcare today right great move let's go to unh here first they have earnings coming up on oh it's october 13th Right. So they closed down here. They gapped up. They broke that 481 level. They're sitting right now at 43 and a half. They were at 484. Um, so let's see. He said 480.92 on United Healthcare. UNH. All right. 480.92. 
right? What happened? We closed right at that fib line, at the fib line. We had moved higher and we pulled back. We came up, we came back for a bounce, 10 o'clock, boom, chakalaga. Right off of that 480.90 level, we closed right there. That closing price, red candle, that close was 481.07. Seven and eight, 15 cents above that line it closed. The low on the candle here, the 10 o'clock candle, the low was 480.91, one penny off. It's, this is a clear and concise entry. Now, could you have looked at this third candle on a one-minute candle along the way? Yes. We could look at that uh, 945 candle. Right? And what happened? We closed up. We pulled back. There's almost, almost that rising three-type pattern. You got to bounce. This was still the better entry. Would this have been a little bit more aggressive? Without a doubt. Right? Did you get a higher move off of this than you have so far? Without a doubt. Okay? But if you're in this at uh 482 and we're sitting right now around 483 4373 let's go back to a five minute candle right overall you're not doing too shabby whatsoever not 53 minutes five minutes what the heck okay there we go right not too shabby at all great bounce and by the way <laughs> let me go back to my presentation for a second All right, so you see that little red zone in there, right? And then you can see right here it says danger zone, and then the yellow is nine fifty to ten o'clock, right? Is the first yellow zone, right? That's there. All the details and the instructions are inside of the comments comment inside of uh, in the members area the instructions on using the clock i wrote eight or nine pages long on the way to use it properly the, the clock i think it was eight or nine pages um well what happened right at this point well we got a pullback that closed that that was the 950 and 955 closing candle this is the 10 o'clock candle right if we go back inadvertently it shut it down and see that yellow zone that's there? That's a retracement zone. I knew it was coming. How? I look at the clock. We're in that time zone. I know what to be looking for. Boom. All over it. Like brown on rice. Right? Excellent. You guys liking this? Give me a one for yes. Come on. Let's show me a little bit of love here. Right? There's a lot. The nuggets I am dropping today are going to be massive. With what we go through on pivots and this, which is part of the pivots, right? But that's just two stocks. And that's on a day I'm not busy. Uh, I'm sorry, that I am busy, that I don't have a lot of time available to me, okay? And, and again, that's always the first day of the week for me, whatever day it is, doesn't matter. If we're doing pop that day, it's a crazy day. Uh, what's the question, Deborah? Um... Thank you, PK. I appreciate that. Two ones from Gene. All right. So overall, great setups today. All right. Let's go and look at the S&P 500 today. SPX. All right. Guys, we have had a really nice run on the S&P. Let me unscrunch that. There we go. We had a really nice run on the S&P. We got a good pullback and a bounce. Okay? So there's some different things that we can do to analyze where we head to, where we go to next. Okay? But that run, that fall right in there um, was a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Very interesting conversation with my youngest daughter this weekend. I'm in the basement working on electrical. I have my hands in a 220 uh, line that I am putting in. I'm running from the basement into the garage. And the wire colors are off a little bit. So I've got a mishmash of how to do it. I'm taping them up to, to the right colors. And, and my hands are in a live panel. And she wants to talk to me. It's in the, the, the circuit breaker panel, right? She wants to talk to me. Okay, give, give me a minute. No, Dad, I really need your help here. Something's off. I don't know what's going on. 
okay, what's happening? And now it's over the weekend, it's Sunday, right? What is it? She said, I don't understand what happened in my 401k. It's dropped down from the last month. Well, she's had her money in there and all of this. So every month she's seen her 401k go up. And right here, she the market goes down. And she's like, why did it go down? I, I don't understand. My, my, my position went down. I, you know, this is not supposed to happen. And, and, like, all right. and it was a half hour discussion. Uh, finally, she was the one that gave up. I was already, you know, sweaty working in the basement. She was rather warm because it was warm on Sunday. Uh, she was rather warm down. I, was, I, I can't stay here anymore. I said, thank you. I got to get back to work anyway. Um, but trying to explain to her why the markets pulled back and how it does and the reaction to it and all of that. She got it. She's known this before. It's just her mind is very focused right now on save, save, save towards a wedding. She's not engaged yet, but they will be. But save towards that wedding. And now her portfolio went down a little bit. So we got this little bit of a pop. And the problem is where we're running into, right? We had this high up here around 4,600 and we failed. We pushed back, came back above the moving averages, got back to, uh, to a bullish bias, true bull. We ran into the negative 272, which is a hesitation level. Write that down if you don't know it. 272 is hesitation, right? And we got to pull back in there. We've now pulled back to that 4,500 level. So we've got, a, there's a lot happening. This is a massive obstacle co course inside of what we're dealing with right now, right? You've got, you know, a, a broken down car and there's a tire in the middle of the road, right? Right there. And right over here, you got a down tree, right? Is right there. And then at the eight moving average, where the eight moving average is, right? There's a whole bunch of branches and debris that have fallen down. At the 21, we got a garbage can. There's just... That path, there's a lot of potential bounce points along the way. Bounce off the, the 100 level, bounce off the 8, bounce off the 21, bounce off the 0 line. There's a lot of stuff in our way. Up above our heads, not only do we have the 272, but we have it where we had a confluence. We missed it by a day. We had a confluence of this up, upward trend line that's in there. So all of this stuff, every bit of this, are things that are, are throwing roadblocks in your way, just stuff happening, okay? Just stuff happening. So it is not as simple of a time to trade as it had been through some of this, right? Where it worked amazing. Now, with that being said, and beyond, right? Because that bullish trend has been going for a while, all right? So now we got some pullback in there. What I want to look at today is what's happened with the existing FIB that we've got drawn and this pullback. Do we find any correlations in there that we can work with? Okay. Um, all right. Let me get some of these questions before I miss them. Uh, Deborah put, oh, question on the clock. Okay. Wouldn't it be good sometimes to enter immediately on the market open if it's very strong, such as with United Healthcare and Netflix? Thanks. So, you know, Hindsight's 2020, Deborah, right? It's easy to say yes after you saw what it did. But how many times do you see a five minute pop and it pulls back? So there are strategies for doing that. One of the strategies, just very you know high level view, is you buy a very small amount of contracts. One, two, just to kind of get in the trade. And if it continues to go and you get a pullback opportunity to buy some more, great. If it breaks out like it did today and you don't get that opportunity, okay, at least you're in the trade. You don't have a whole lot of contracts, but you've got something. Okay, so caution of taking the breakout until we know it's really a breakout. And we don't know that until we get pullbacks. Jennifer said, oh my gosh, bumps on the road. Like best learning. Yeah, they are. Um, yeah, they should have told her, if you want to talk, that's fine, but please hold these two wires in the box for me. <laughs> um, short conversation. Yeah, good point. Uh, <laughs> um, not to worry about paying for the wedding because dad will always pay for the wedding. Uh, good luck with that. Uh, let's see. Deborah said, ride the pop up, then close like Amelia does the scalping. Absolutely. But she finds the right entry for the scalp instead of just the, on the open in most cases. Okay. So, um, you got it, Deborah. Good. All right, so as we look here, I want to go and analyze before we look at weekly, before we look at monthly, 
I want to go and analyze one additional Fibonacci total. Now, I'm going to need buy-in on this. Okay, I'm going to need buy-in. I'm not going to dare touch it until I get buy-in. I want 75% of you at least to give me an answer or I'm not going to share it. All right? Because I know I'm going to get, if I don't, I'm going to get some of the, the angry comments with people. So here, here's what it is. I'm going to share with you a Fibonacci tool. Some of you might have seen it before. I don't expect most of you will have a full understanding of it. You'll get it. You'll get the concept. But the, well, what about in this scenario? We're not there. That's not what I'm teaching today. Okay? So here's my question to you. Is it okay for me to share this with you, even if you don't or may not fully understand what I'm about to do? One for yes, two for no. Okay. All right. Excellent. We're here to learn. There you go, Jennifer. I love it. I love it. Okay. Excellent. Good. So let's see. There's a tool on the Fibonacci or on the drawing tools toolbar. Right? I call it the Fib toolbar because that's primarily all I use there. If you hover your mouse over it, it says Fibonacci extension. Fib extension. Okay. What is Fib extension? Let's look. We're going to click on that tool. We're going to start off. Actually, let me do it this way. We're not going to do that. Let's do this. We're going to identify where we started the Fib and where the Fib ended. Those are the first two points. You need three points in here. The third point we're going to use, C, is down here. It's the lowest low on this pullback that we took that took place in there. Okay? So watch. I go ahead and identify um, Okay. I go ahead and identify that lowest low. I'm going to click on that low. And I'm going to release the mouse button and I'm going to move it up. Now watch, I can't go anywhere but the highest high on that candle as I couldn't go anywhere but the lowest low on this candle, right? Here, let me do it again. doesn't allow it, right? It doesn't matter where you click on it. It's going to go to the bottom. So I clicked in the middle. I click on the top of that bar. It doesn't matter. Put it at the, at the wick. Uh, actually, it took it off of the previous one. My bad. So it's got to come off of that wick. So we're going to go down to that, the lowest low. We're going to come up here. It doesn't give you a choice. I can't go anywhere else on the bar. It won't allow it. I can go to a different bar, but I can't go anywhere else here. So I'm going to click B. So A is the starting point. B is the finish point of the fibs. All right? We're going to come down to this lowest low in here. All right? And we're going to click on that, and that's C. So what we've just done is we've identified A, B, C. All right? We have A. We have A, B, and C, right? And what this does is this. It measures the distance between A and B, calculates this pullback that's taken place down to here to C, and then extrapolates out the A, B upward this way because this A to B was 100% of the move. Now we're looking for a C to D calculation, all right? So we don't see that. Let me go F11 and scrunch down. Here we go. Okay. So here is my one line. So what, what just happened was this. We calculated A to B and B to C. What that does then is it gives me a 236, which normally when I get this pullback and bounce, we're normally at or above that line already. But that's anything that's below that level, you're not interested. It's not an ABCD pattern at this point. There's no need for that uh, move just yet on the, the with the extensions, okay? None. But once we broke out, we came back and retested and bounced. And we bounced right off of that 44.16.61 level. Literally, the low on that wick right there. Let me do this. Get rid of that. The low on that wick right there is 
We're talking about 44, 8, uh, 16, 61. We're in two bucks. Uh, am I right there? Low. 44, 44.15, and we're at 44.16 half. So we just got through it. We pushed down into a confluence of the 8 and the 55, and we bounced off of it, right? So the expectation of a bounce is completely there, right, and should be there. Well, now if we scrunch down a little bit, you'll see that we ran up into this fib level. We ran literally right into it. Right, the high on this day was 45.41 and a quarter. 45.42.17, we're right there, right? But that's not the most important feature or function, right? What is, is we've also got another line that got snapped in here on this ABC pattern, and that's the 618. We fully expect a pullback at that 618 level. Right. So as we moved up into that point, if you're trading into that and you're looking to hold that bullish position over, you're going to want to know that there's a high probability that we get a pullback off of this level. Why? The 272 is a hesitation level. On top of that, we have a 618 uh, in there, which is a massively the most important number you could ever have in Fibonacci speed. Right. Is right there. Right. Those two levels combined together give you an extremely strong resistance. Now, does that mean we're going down from here? No. Does it mean we're going up then, Rob? No. It doesn't mean anything about that. It just means that there was a strong resistance or ceiling up above our head. Don't drive. Don't drive from here, here, New York, right, where I am, to California. Looking at California is the end result, of course, but don't drive thinking, what road do I have to make the last left turn on in California? You ain't in California. Don't worry about what road you're going to turn last on in California. Worry about what's happening now. What are your roads out of New York? Once you get into New Jersey, what are the roads in New Jersey? How quickly can you get out of Jersey? What's the, the route there? And then whether you're going down south, or you're going across west, what's in Pennsylvania, whatever it is, what's your route next? Don't look at the whole picture or, or how to eat an elephant one bite at a time. Don't focus on the whole elephant, right? One of my favorite mo kids movies, and I, I like it. It's a great movie, is uh, Matilda. My girls love it. They still to this day will sit and watch it. We'll sit together. And my youngest one is great. So I'll be on the couch and it comes on and she literally will get up, come and sit next to me. She's 26. She comes sit next to me, curl into my arms. 27, goodness gracious. Curl into my arms and just sit with me and watch that movie. Okay. Um, and this little boy got in trouble for uh, eating the principal's cake. So they made this massive cake for this little boy and told him he had to eat it. And at first I He's a big kid, right? Okay. And he's eating that cake and oh, he's exhausted now. He's full. He's tired. He feels sick. And someone stands up and says, you can do it. I forget his name, right? Yells it out and he keeps eating. He licks the plate and he holds up the empty plate. The cake was massive, probably 18, 20 inches in diameter and 10 inches, 12 inches high. Okay. Uh, so, but how did he do it? He didn't do it with the end goal of I need to eat the whole cake. He did it one bite at a time right? You need to take these trades one bite at a time. What's your next resistance level? And what's your reaction around there? How strong of a level is it? For me, when I see a double resistance, and that's what this is, a double resistance, two things happen in there, two pieces of sheetrock or plywood on your ceiling, you're going to slow down, okay? You're going to slow down. We ran right into that sucker and backed right back off again, right? Standard stuff over and over and over again. Right. It told us the potential is there for it to happen. It told it to us. All right. Now, could you have gone off of this level from earlier on? Yes, you could have. Right. And we do that on that first pullback and breakout. We look for that to happen in there. If I get rid of that ABC and do it all over again and go A to B to C, guess what? We're in the same dang place. Not much has changed because that bottom is about the same as that bottom. So nothing's really changed except my 618 is right at, right at my negative 272. It's even stronger level now because of where it's sitting, okay? All right, let me see what I got here. Um, easy as A, B, has one, two, three, right? <laughs> uh, John said, why wasn't the C chosen five days 
from the B. I think you were talking about where I just put it, John. I just saw your, your comment in there. Um, we were looking at this pullback in here to see what this pullback was going to rationalize for us. All right. Now, if we, we've got it on this C, if we scrunch down, we broke through the 618. Right. And look, did, look at the difference. We ran into it and we broke through. Now I, now I want to pull back and a bounce. And now I'm ready for the next leg again. Right. And there was that next leg up. Still a lot of stuff happening up there between the 382, the 100 point level, a lot of, a lot of things going on there. A lot of things going on there. Okay. Um, I need a 4,700. I don't have one. So do that. Okay. Bueno. Okay. Why is B not the August high? Uh, who was that? Gene. Okay. Um, so this was July. I'm not sure if you're referring to that. But Gene, the, the way this tool works is A and B are drawn off of wherever the fibs were drawn from. Always. Because it's a relationship of where did that fib, where did you identify that Fibonacci, which is an area of strength that it pulled back from already. Once it's pulled back, when it does break out, if it continues to move up, where does it go to? And we look for that AB, which is, you see that the A to B, I'm going to point it on my screen like you're going to see me. Where the fifth started, where the fifth ended, that's A to B. C to D is, D would be the one. Okay? D would be the one. I've got some advanced fib tools that are not part of Omega charts. And... Uh, those uh, have a, an A, B, C, D in it where it identifies D. So what we're looking for is can we make it, if we break out, can we make it up to that D So or that one? And that's what we're looking now. If we get back above where we were at our high, our next target is going to be one. And guess what? Our negative 618, again, anything with 618 in it is extremely important, highest level of importance. On top of that, we have a one from this pattern, which is a D. Right, it's our D setting, A B to C D. Right, it's that one hundred percent extension. If I measure, if I measure with a dollar cost tool, and I'm going to be off a little bit, I don't really care. And it doesn't matter the angle you go at means nothing. That's about three hundred and forty-two dollars. If I measure and duplicate this from C, from right here, you could see that we run right into that green line. That right there is the A to B equals CD. A, B equals CD, okay? That's what I'm looking for. That's the setup I want to identify in here. Let's see what we got. Um, yeah, exactly, Robert. Um, okay, good, good. No other questions. That was just Gene replying back. Okay. Uh, bop, 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 bop. So right now, taking that one bite at a time on the elephant, right? Not trying to eat the whole thing at once. Where do we go? To the upside, we're going to look at that 4542. To the downside, we're sitting right near that 4500 now. So my eight is going to be the next downside target, 4483. Okay. And again, a lot of stuff on the downside in my way between the 100 level, the eight, the 21, and then the fib line. 55s, I don't put a lot of uh, inference on, but the 55 is there. We get down to the 4,400 level. There's just, there's a lot of stuff blocking us up right now. Now, if we go in and stretch this out a little bit and look at weekly options, we had failed a couple of weeks back on the S&P and we've climbed back up. We have not yet been able to get inside of that uptrend again yet but we are moving back up higher, right? Last week was a great week as far as strength goes, right? This candle today is the whole week so far. It's just today, right? We look at a monthly candle, a much steeper angle. We broke out of the monthly candle. We broke out of, uh, on the monthly candle last month, so August. September, we're not that far in. We're still in a bearish mode, if you would, <clears throat> on the candle, but it's not, uh, the monthly is not as strong as the weekly. The weekly is showing us a little bit more detail. The monthly is just a much longer term, right? So it's more the investor phase than it is trader. But I still want to see what those traders, investors, individuals are looking at. That's where the big money tends to look is there, okay? That's part of my analysis in there. 
All right. So let me ask, was that worth me teaching? And even if you didn't fully understand it, was that worth it? I mean, one for yes, the two for no, and the three for don't. No, no, I'll, I won't do three, Jeff, because you usually put a three. One for yes, two for no, four for don't ever do that again. Okay, no four so far. That's good. Excellent. All right, good, good. We may we may break that out and make it its own little YouTube video. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the topic today. Is pivot point mastery? So we're going to spend just a few minutes on it here. I want to give you an overview of what pivot points are how they work, right? The details behind them and so forth. Okay. Let's take that down. I'm going to go, I'm going to go to trade station. All right. And I have a template created called my power hour. And normally I am an SPY and a QQQs trader on this template. This is SPY. This is QQQ. Okay. What we're looking at is a pivot point. The pivot point is the calculation is easy. Yesterday's or previous trading days, high, low, close. That's it. Add up the high plus the low plus the close. Add those three numbers up or whatever position you're looking at, divide by three. That gives you a pivot point. Every other line, S's and R's, the S's are support, the R's are resistance. Every one of them, they are floor traders' way of using support and resistance. They can't remember on all these different stocks, these different levels, but using pivot points is the same calculation. There's no interpretation of it. It's their methodology of where's resistance and support. So you've got S1, S2, S3, 4, and 5, and it goes R1 all the way up to R5. Now I also have half ones in here. And those halves are midpoints, right? So R2 and a half, S3 and a half, they're midpoints. Let's talk first, not about the midpoints. The midpoints are the dotted lines, whether green or red, okay? Yellow line on my charts is pivot. Greens are all uh, resistances. Reds are all supports, okay? Uh, and I look at it as targets and, and stops, okay? But forget about the dotted line for a second. If we got a breakout, let's go back to Netflix. We pushed up, closed right at that pivot point, and we bounced. If you took that bounce in there, you've got a midpoint, you've got your next resistance line at R2. My goal is allow the stock to bounce a little bit off of there first, Okay, you got to use your rules for the bounce. And then you're going to get out before the pivot point, before the, the resistance, that next resistance level, not midpoint per se, right? It's that next level. If I have a stock like SPY and the distance between a, a pivot point is 453.05 and 453.99, we'll call it a dollar. We'll call this a dollar, right? I will not use the midpoint as a place to scale out of the trade because it's only 50 cents away. By the time I get my bounce, I get into the trade. I've got a bid ask spread to contend with. I buy the option at $5. If I try to sell it when we get up to the midpoint, it's 480, right? I'm underwater because of bid ask spread and, and all the other things that just we talked about. Okay. So I will not use that midpoint. You've got a larger distance in there. See what Q's look like today. So we've got 376, 38 for S1, and the pivot is 338, uh, 378. So for me, if it's $2 or greater, that's me. If it's $2 or greater, I will use the midpoint on the SPY and the Q's. I use the midpoint as a place to scale out of the trade. All right. So as you get the bounce, and if you took a trade here, or let's see if you even had one today. Let's see. In a draw tool. So we got down, we closed at support, and we bounced. All right. We 
pull back, and we bounced. We never really got a pullback. We did there. We came here. We pulled back. We got a bounce. You could have had a, waited for the breakout above the moving averages if you so chose to, and you're here. If you took this bounce in here, you had a little bit of heat to contend with on the downside. That's all it is. No ifs, ands, or buts. It's just it's what happens. But getting in off of that S1 level, I would get in on S1. And if I'm using midpoints, if I have at least $2 in here, I'm going to exit one half of the trade at the midpoint and the other half of the trade just below my, uh, in this case, my pivot point, my yellow line, but just below that next resistance level, right? That is extremely important in the understanding, the mechanics behind this. Um, so Gene, it's not a symbol that brings up the pivot point graph. So these pivot points are proprietary. This came from somebody that's in one of my masterminds. I can use it. I can't share it. I can't give it. I can't sell it. I can't do anything with it. It's theirs. They don't want it out there. Okay. So they allow me to use this indicator set uh, for myself, for my own trading. Okay. Um, trade station used to have pivots in it in nine, five, they don't any longer. Uh, I, someone told me they believe they have them in 10. I know TOS has pivot points, multiple pivot points in TOS that you can use it, but it's an indicator that you've got to add right in TOS. Okay. I think it's indicated. So it's not a symbol that does it. It's the, having the indicator built on that page. And that's what it's just, it's an indicator set. Okay. So when you look at pivots, you know what, let me do it this way. S2, S3. Closing price, previous day, hollow can. We come up. We come up. And this is today, right? This is the next day. All right, that dotted line. We're waiting for the pullback and the bounce, and then the entry is taken. The big E. Entry is taken. Right, my target is going to be just below my S three line. Right, target is executed and we're done. If you have a big enough distance and you want to put a midpoint in there, you would take half the trade off at the midpoint and the other half at the the target zone right above, uh, right below rather resistance. Um, no, Kevin, I don't have to do anything with the pivots at, at all. I just start trade station and they start up. They're not they're not solid lines that I snap on the chart. They're an indicator that was built that allows it to be on the line. Um, Brenda said that TOS doesn't have the label show up for R1, R2. Um, can TOS users, can someone tell me, is there, I don't want to know the how that Brenda or whomever can call TOS, but is there, can you turn the labels on on TOS, if anybody knows. And if you know the, the particular pivot indicator you're using, if you have a yes to that and know the indicator, that would be great. That I wouldn't mind sharing, but teaching how to do, you know, easy call to TOS to do. All right. Um, it, so you would get out of half the trade here, the other half the trade here, right? It's a great setup, a phenomenal system of, you know, tradability. When, oh, we got enough time here. Yeah, let's just do this. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go over to the gap statistics. Statistical analysis using gaps. All right. Run your gap stats here. Foundational videos. All right. So we're going to break these up a little bit. We're changing the whole area, members area here. I'm working on this now. But you've got pivot points and gaps, okay, um, and so forth, right? So pivots are, or gaps are an important component to me, right? Pivots are. Uh, I love gaps as well. But now I'm tying both pivot points and gaps together that if, if you have – the gap stats, you need to go in and run those, right? Uh, we do have some templates for trade station in here as well. Bonus section uh, is a calculator. 
Uh, and then there's the top secret gap stats list, which we don't share with everybody because it's top secret, right? Fibonacci gaps, gaps that don't get filled. A lot of gap stuff, of course, because this is gap statistics. But we're looking at pivots and gaps. That video right there is worth the entire year's subscription to uh, gap statistics, gap stats, just for that video alone. All right. How do you figure the numbers yourself for pivots? So there are pivot point calculators that you can use. Um, um, let me see something real. If I could find it in like a minute, um, Debbie, I'll, I will. But let me see. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. No, no, go there. Let's go to here. Let's go to pivot. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to open this up. Just give me a second. All right, wasn't sure what page it was going to open on. So Trip said, Brenda, the SVE pivots on TAS that I use show the price values instead of R1 and S1. Okay. Um. And I wrote this like a hundred years ago. I just don't remember what's in it. All right. So I told you the pivot already. I thought I had some other calculations in there though. All right, so I can give you the S1 and, and the R1, Debbie. That's the only ones I have here in front of me is this. So once you get your pivot, that's where P is. S1 is two times the pivot. Got to do that calculation first. You need to understand math in this, folks. You got to make sure you do what's in the parentheses first before outside. Two times the pivot, right? So the pivot was 35.76. Minus 36.79. So 71.52 minus 36.79. S1 becomes 74. I'm sorry, 34.73. And then the, the um, R2, I'm sorry, R1 is the opposite. Two times the pivot minus the long, right? But those are the overall calculations for it. And I might, let me see if I have three in here. Yeah, I don't. It's all, it's one and two. This was all about the very basics R1, S1. I never release this. This is part of my memoirs for my kids. Yeah, I don't have anything else on it. So, um, yeah, so I don't know if it's going to let me do that. Let me see. No. All right. Um, I appreciate that trip. Thank you. So, but you can find it online, Devin. You can search for pivot point calculations uh, and it'll give it to you. All right. That's all I was able to find for you right now. Okay. So guys, when you look at, when you look at overall on pivot points, right? Gaps and pivots are a critical part for me to take the trade on gaps. And a big part of it is if you understand gap math or gap calculations, on how a gap does or does not fill by the end of that trading day, which again, is everything that's inside of gap statistics. If you understand that component of it, then when you get a gap, the right gap on the right stock, you ready for this? Not only the right gap, not only on the right stock, the right amount on the right day and in the right direction up or down, are critical to say, yes, I should trade that gap or not. There are times when 100% of the time for that, on that gap, whatever that price point is, $2, $5, whatever it is, 100% of the time, the gap fills by the end of the day. 100% of the time. 
but you're going to go and look at it and realize that it's only gapped up and never gapped down. So if it gaps down, I have no idea if it's going to work or not. I know that there's a very high probability of working, realizing that sooner or later it's going to fail, but there's a very high probability of working if it gaps in my direction. So understanding the stock, the gap, you know, gap direction, gap amount, the day of the week, not the time, because that's the, the start of the day, right? The 930 open, but the day of the week, uh, the direction that it gapped, the amount of money that it gapped, uh, will it fill that gap or not by the end of the day? Woo! It's exactly what I want to see. Um, all right. So Robert said, person's pivots also only show the levels. You can change the colors. Yeah, person's is in toss. Yeah, okay, in toss. Um, you uh, only show the levels. You can change colors of the lines. That's what I do. You can figure out R1, R2 by color. So what Robert's saying is change the colors so that you know what your colors are. Put your ones both as one color, R1, S1, two, uh, R2, S2 are another color, three is another, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Brenda said she did it. Thank you. Guys, I appreciate it very much. When, when you guys do this, it's awesome. Um. All right, so PK said, at one time I compared the numbers of your pivots on your personal pivots to SVE and Woody's pivots. And if I remember correctly, Woody's values were closer to yours on the gap statistics. On the SPY gap of 901 today, it says 100% filled. Is that accurate? Well, yeah, but how many times did it fill PK at $9.01? How many times did it fill between $9 and $10? Uh, not fill. How many times did it happen between $9 and $10 over the last two years? It's probably a very small number that's inside of there. Okay. So just caution there. Person's pivots used to be in TradeStation until TradeStation screwed everything up and stopped free indicators from being published in there. It's just, it's insanity. Uh, they stopped their education. You got to pay for it now. She, she, she knows how to trade. She trades um, something like that. Something with a she. Um, is their education arm? And then on top of that, you know, they've cut back on support. They're not, they're taking away the free indicators. They're not making it easy to say, yes, you should stick with them. Yeah. I mean, I spoke to them over there and they were like, well, it's a hundred bucks a month. You can put indicators up in the store for sale. I'm like, I don't plan. I'm not an indicator guy. I'm not a designer. I'm not going to sell hundreds of indicators. I'm going to pay a hundred bucks a month for that. Yeah, yes, but how many times does it happen on the 9 to 10 PK? That's what I was getting at. If it's only five or six times it's even happened, I wouldn't even look at it, right? And as we teach in the stats, we want higher numbers. Yeah, sounds like the response to TradeStation is next. You might be right, Robert. Cool, this was very good. Excellent, I'm glad you liked it, Robin. All right, and we're right about that time, folks. So sorry we didn't have any time to, to get into the... Uh, candidates that you may have had on your list for today, but we had two great topics today, two phenomenal education topics. I mean, what we did here with pivot points, right? And what we did with the ABCD tool or the extension tool, expansion on Fibonacci's was phenomenal, okay? Both good sections that will teach you a lot on exactly how to attack these two types of trades. Um I'll take a look at it, Pecan, but I'm pretty sure we did that once before. But I'll take a look. Right. Pay tra uh, trade station version 10 has pivots under drawing. Um, yep. Happy trading you guys as well. You are all welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, right? Listen, Lee, drop a link into the gap trading stats. Folks, go check that out. The 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 secret report alone is worth the, the what you get out of gap statistics. But uh, if you want, there is a... I think there's a two, I believe there's a two-week trial on the annual. Run all the gaps that you want, okay? Doesn't matter. I run them every day, every time. I never flinch. I don't think about it. If I'm ready to take that trade, I'm running those gap statistics. It takes me two minutes, and I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm not using data that's old. We could have had five or six gaps in the last month or two that go against the numbers, and what used to work may not work any longer. So I want to know that, and I know that by continually running those gap stats over and over again. So with that, make it a profitable day. Stay focused on the quest to becoming a great trader. 
Keep crushing it. And remember, you're just one trade away. Take care, everybody. I will see you at our next update. Bye for now.